Me too. Like we're right in the middle of uh, Colin starting a match, a game against Caius, who's running Poka. I th I feel I feel like we've seen like just about just just about every combination of things we we could reasonably expect to see. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of champions being played in this particular tournament. There are 45 champions in the game, which is noteworthy now. And 19 of them aren't being played. So, KS plays down an Indigo Dreamwalker. Uh, again, like you said, Polka, Ruby, Sapphire, sure sounds like Gorfies to me. Uh, Colin, on his side of the board, running the same deck we saw him running last time, as is good. It would be terrible to have to disqualify him for changing decks. And uh, this is obviously post-reserves, as there's a Drowned Shrine in the graveyard there. Would you expect to see an Indigo Dreamwalker in a Gorfis type deck? Yeah. It is a 3-4 with flight for 4. It it's does evasion, some cool It makes a card true. It makes your next card free, prophesized. Yeah. It does a lot of things that kind of help you. I'm not sure if it takes Royal Falconry spot, though. Like, it's prob it might just be a nice pick. It might just be a nice tempo-orientated Gorfis deck. It might not be Gore Feast. We see Fanteo try to hit the board. It's immediately attempted to be countered. Colin says, nope, downvote. Verdict of the Ancient King says, no. Fanteo will hit the board, as will a worker bot. That worker bot coming down to prevent some damage from the Blaze Elemental, if this is the turn for gore feast of course a single gore feast would only get nine points of damage through on this turn without a speed troop i say only a four cost action that does nine damage and gives my troop on board plus two attack is not bad There's another Indigo Dreamwalker hitting the board. So at this point, Fenteo is live. It'll be able to create Terrarantula eggs, and it looks like Colin is going to have it do so immediately. Chaos gets to begin his turn. Now, Chaos... With a lot of resources open, only two cards in hand, and only six damage in the sky right now. Six damage in the sky is a lot, though. That does have Colin on a three-turn clock. It's likely that he will choose this as an opportune time to... No, nope. he could have time rippled. Could have time rippled there. Oh, he will. He waited until the very last phase priority that he could, which is correct, but scared me nonetheless. Again, we might see a counter here. I think that's kind of what Colin wanted to see, was a counter. And the Indigo Dreamwalker is replayed. Probably hitting the same card in uh, Chaos's deck that the original did. Double free. This card is so free. Now, yeah, that is an interesting point. The Indigo Dreamwalker does not reduce the cost of the next card in your deck to zero. It just adds that you can play this for free text, which means that a second Indigo Dreamwalker played will still hit the same card because all it's looking for is a card that costs uh, one or greater. Which means you can still inspire. That means you can still key off of it for things that look for cost. Mm-hmm. 
You see the turn is passed again. Colin on five needs an answer to this situation. Doesn't look like he finds one here. I think this is probably... The answer is a tarantula on top of the deck. Yeah, the answer is a tarantula. And it's not there. We will see Colin concede. He goes to a wonderful between screens, uh, between match screens. It's, I don't know if he's done with his round. That might be one and one between them, or just the first game. But just look at this fantastic art. What are those three? What are those three troops, Hacky? Uh, those. Oh wow, uh, that is uh, three Highlands, Highlands Magus, Highlands, Highlands Shinobi, and Highlands Black Belt, respectively. That is Colin in the center, his vanity card. The vanity card for his son on the left, and the vanity card for his daughter on the right. Pretty cool cards. Oh, and the coin flip's coming back down, so we do have another game coming up. This is good. This is exciting. Colin will choose to play first, draws his opening hand. He'll throw that back. That's not an opening hand he wants. He'll throw this one back, too. He'll throw this one back, too. He'll probably keep this one out of tenacity. Now Chaos gets to decide whether or not he'll mulligan, and does mulligan to six, which is... and mulligan to five. Wow. That's, uh... That's interesting, because... A lot of seven and uh, six card hands that weren't normally keepable became a heck of a lot more keepable when you see that your opponent mulls to four. Yeah, you don't see that type of uh, action mulliganing every day. That's quite odd. Both players running ten shards. It's not true, obviously, but maybe it felt like that to them. Colin does draw a decent card for himself here. If he tops a sapphire into a sapphire, he might actually be in a fantastic spot here. He can actually draw, he can top a sapphire into any shard. He just really wants a shard next and then a sapphire eventually. So, oh, nasty. Not quite what Colin was looking for here. And now this will open Chaos up to having a second Sapphire Shard open on his turn. Ooh, and the Smirking Trickster is going to drop here. That will take a look at Colin's hand, revealing the Time Ripple, Azure Fate Sorceress, and Fenteo the Brood Priest. This means all things open. If Chaos can't answer that Fenteo, he is going to hold up something. Or if he has the ability to hold up something, he will. Also produces a two-attack troop on the board, which, again, assuming Gore Feast, which we haven't seen, is always a powerful card to have. But for what other reason than Gorfis would Smirking Trickster make it into the deck instead of Subterranean Spy? Mm. Being quick, being able to block more effectively. I don't know, there was a discussion about this in chat earlier. I'm of the firm belief that I would prefer holding uh, Subterranean Spy up. We see Colin play the Fenteo and likely... Oh, it does hit the board! That is fantastic for uh, Colin here. So he'll pass turn, he puts down the worker bot in case he has to block a uh, a blaze elemental here. We see arcane focus from chaos, pre-shard, so he might be looking for a resource to play. Finds a ruby, plays that. Oh, this could be... Well, the the resources for counter still open. Chaos not swinging, of course. 
Now we'll see if Fenteo gets to go online and begin its reign of terror here. So Fenteo creates some Terrarantula eggs. Those will go into Chaos's deck, three of them. If they're drawn, a 5-5 five, five Terrarantula for five will appear on Colin's side of the board and destroy one of Chaos's troops at Colin's choice. Quick Azure Fate Sorceress is so interesting. Yeah. Colin can afford to wait until he knows this is safe. And Indigo Dreamwalker hits the board. And that might be the trigger signal for the Azure Fate Sorceress. Or Colin might choose to wait until he's put more eggs in. Obviously, with six or nine eggs in Chaos's deck, it would be a little more effective here to activate the Azure Fate. We see the Blaze Elemental come out, and it swings with the Smirking Trickster. Worker Bot will likely get in front of the Smirking Trickster here. Oh, Colin chooses to block the Blaze Elemental instead of getting rid of the the permanent threat that is the Smirking Trickster. So he blocks an extra point of damage, but leaves two damage on the board for his opponent. So here we'll see the Azure Fate comes down. If this hits a Terrarantula Egg, it could do the majority of some work. It does not. It's only four cards drawn, but all those Terrarantulas are live now. Now Fenteo will put some eggs into KSS deck. Now, Colin does have the opportunity to time ripple his Fenteo and replay it to bury five more cards here. And it looks like that's not going to be his choice. A Terrarantula egg off the top? Nope. So is that six or nine eggs now? It's six. Six eggs in Chaos's deck. That does mean about one in a, fi a one in five chance of hitting one of those. And Chaos appears to have card draw with Arcane Focuses. We saw Colin had Shrine of Ulfar in his uh, list somewhere there. It was in the graveyard. So he was clearly afraid of some card draw. We see Time Ripple used on the Indigo Dreamwalker to put that back in hand. This might get countered or verdict. It does get verdicted. Colin would like to draw a Reese here, I believe. And does. Hey, look. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, I thought he was going to fail his order of operations there. He wants to create the eggs before he plays this. And now he's going to play this right from his hand and hope it doesn't get countered. If this gets countered, he'll be a little salty, but it's not the end of the world. That'll be eight. That hits a Terrarantula. That'll be I, ten I'm more. seeing explosions. Yeah, this cannot be... This almost cannot miss. Oh, did it? No, there's a second one. Okay, so another ten will go. The client sometimes does the egg operations very silly. Oh, oh it, did, it fizzled. Else? It did fizzle. So there are... There were nine eggs, it's seven okay, of which are in that Reese bottom. Because Reese is going to create a worker bot, which isn't inspired. Oh, yeah. that's true. It it feels okay, kind of, but I mean that is a huge board presence for Colin now. All in all. Poor, poor egg creation by Colin. Really bad choice to put all those eggs at the bottom of his deck, Colin. You'd think as the Exalted you would know better. That's of course a joke. He has no choice of where those eggs go. Are, are you suggesting the shuffler is broken? I'll, I'll make a forum thread and discuss that later. Okay, I was thinking about how to use these three cards in his hand. There is a Sun Soul Phoenix in the graveyard, which he voids six actions to put into play. That Phoenix was buried by the Terrarantula eggs. Gore Feast here would have been enough, but he appears not to have it. Also, multiple Phoenixes would have been enough. Holy darn, that's scary. Colin wants to draw maybe another Reese. <laughs> Not not that. It's going to create some more eggs. 
That's up to 10 eggs in those 22 cards there. Or it'll be 25 cards when this is said and done. So that's almost a 50% chance of drawing into them. That's... Oh, oh man. He... Colin only needs to hit one now. It's, it's mathematically incredibly hard to imagine that it wouldn't uh, be the berry he needed. It is not a tarantula egg off the top of the deck. It's a burn to the face and a crackling bolt or two more burns. Oh, another Sun Soul Phoenix. That's, that's enough. That is so insane. It's very rare to see the fenteo Ezerfe combo begin without seeing it finish off just because of the way the, the, the odds of distribution go. Uh, entirely possible that with another egg trigger in there, Colin would have gotten it on that first activation, but he couldn't choose to do that before playing the Reese. Still, fantastic between rounds uh, matchup here. I believe that was the match, though, going to his opponent.